Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to this exciting tutorial on Blender 3.4 Smoke or Atmospheric Smoke or Dry Ice Smoke, um, whatever you want to call it. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. I have a, a scene here. Um, I have set up basic stuff. Um, first of all, camera, and three lights, and a backdrop. Okay, and uh, this is the camera setting, and that is the focal length. I, I set these all up already to um, expedite the workflow. Okay, or the tutorial. So this is the light back. Okay, and that's the color right there, and uh, eight thousand watts, and its position is this you can just copy these numbers I guess um, light right and the location and rotation are these and it's it's um, settings are area power 1000 watts and the color is that uh, please note all of these lights are one meter in size okay otherwise you'll have issues with shadows light top is that color and 4000 watts and it's the same and its position is that okay cool um, backdrop is just a simple backdrop um, I created a a plane and then I extruded it that way and then I created some bevel but uh, there are your settings here okay um, so that's basically it all right so let's move on to the main stuff now let me put in a cube here and then let me hide that let me put in a plane and exact same spot here okay and let's jive um, and let's dive into geometry nodes create new let's drop and distribute points on faces node okay and let me drop this to one and the seed to hash frame okay um, this is so that that um, each frame I'll have different points on the plane itself okay now the idea is for me to distribute this cube onto this plane okay that's what I'm trying to get to so um, because for every smoke if your source is good your smoke will be good it's as simple as that okay so let me try instance on points okay there you go and let's bring in that cube by bringing in object info and connect that geometry to instance and select our cube there they are okay obviously it's not great so let's randomize its rotation and scale random value connect that to rotation and we will change this to minimum of minus 180 to plus 180 in the seed of one okay let me copy this random value and connect this to the scale Obviously, we don't want minimum of 180, but 0 0.25 and a maximum of 1. And I will change the seed to hash frame on this one as well, so that it changes every frame. Therefore, you get this. Okay, cool. So let me reset this. All right, nice one. Just going to set it back to camera. Okay, nice. So we've got our um, geometry node set up here now. Okay. So um, this cube, we'll just leave it hidden. All right. So next thing is I want to add a modifier, subdivision surface modifier, like that. OK, that doesn't seem to work. Maybe we'll try that again later. All right. Um, but the idea is, so the idea is now we will use this as our source to uh, create smoke okay um, I know why it's not working 
Okay, I just realized that. Basically, uh, you look at this here and you look at the data pane here, there's nothing there. And that's because you need to um, realize instances. The moment you realize instances, you've got a bunch of data here, meaning they are not uh, packed. I'm guessing, you know, if you don't put this, they're packed geometry. If you don't, if you do put this in, they'll unpacked. Okay. I like in Houdini. All right. So let's now add subdivision surface. There you go. That works now. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Cool. And let me click on this and you've still got this. That's perfect. Now <clears throat> we're going to use this as our source. Okay. Uh, for smoke. So Let's go into object, quick effects, smoke. Okay, there you go. We got ourselves a little bit of a smoke here. So what I'm going to do is straight away, I'm going to edit this in such a way that, okay, it fits our camera screen here. Okay, I think we need to go back to layout because we're done with the geometry nodes. Okay, so let me push this upwards. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, so that's fine. And going to edit mode, select phase, and that one. And I'm going to drag this in the Y axis, like that, just to fit there the screen. And I want to choose the top and in the Z axis, just a little bit up. And then I don't want this much space on this side. So I'm just going to bring this guy in a little bit. Okay, there you go. So ideally, uh, that's what we should be looking at. Let me look at the front view here. So I think that's okay. Okay, that's looking good. All right. So um, I have this pane open up here because I want to go in here and I want to pin this because at the moment in Blender you need to keep pushing this replay button every time you change the settings uh, for your smoke so I got that one uh, I want to quickly check the adaptive domain and enable resolution to one okay so that um, we don't get our Blender crash on us let's change this resolution to 128 okay so you know it's a better resolution really and first thing i want to do is just check this bar border collisions bottom okay so let's uh, play this guy so something's going on but not a lot okay that's fine um i want to rename this plane to smoke object because that is our smoke object and let's go into here okay so let's check this out i want to first of all increase the sampling sampling sub steps okay so this is to improve the quality of fast moving flows and this will be a fast moving flow okay so i'm just going to push that out i don't want to change initial temperature or density at the moment but i will add a noise to the density okay so i'll come to that so then the floor source i want to change the surface emission to 2 and volume emission to 1 so you have both the surface and the volume emission being emitted now surface emission is the one that reacts to your incoming velocity and stuff like that not the volume um, not sure why but yeah that's how it is i'm going to enable initial velocity normal and give it a 2 and then y minus 1 and z would be minus 20 Okay, so it gets pushed downwards and in the negative y direction because you can see positive y is that way. Okay, so it gets pushed that way as well as pushed down. All right, <clears throat> that's what that is. And um, now it's time to set the density up. So I want to start gradually. So I'm going to change it to zero on the zeroth frame and on the 24th frame. I want to change this to one and keyframe that. Okay, it's perfect. Now let's go into animation. Um, select graph editor. And that guy. Go into modifiers here. 
and add noise okay so I want to change the scale to 6 strength to 2 let me offset this by 1.8 these are numbers that I previously worked with so I'm just gonna punch them as they are okay and I also want to restrict the frame range because if you look at it it's already starting to happen I don't want that so I want it to start um, at 24 and and 250 okay so the first 24 frames are as per our animation from 0 to 1 okay that's what that is and I also want to use blend out and blend in so you got a little bit of blend going on and finally the blend type I want to multiply it okay so there you go that wouldn't make much difference here but if you were to have animation um, or keyframed animation that would make a difference but anyway right so that's our density set up now and the smoke object fully set up okay I'm gonna move on to the smoke domain just want to double check what else is uh, what else I can change yep so in the adaptive domain I've got these set up that's okay and vorticity I want to give 0 0.05 uh, not too much not too less and uh, making changes to these will change its buoyancy okay so I'm just gonna leave them because I want it to go that way okay uh, and let me add a dissolve but this time is um, too fast so I'm gonna give it two seconds meaning 48 frames okay and I will enable noise and I'm gonna leave these at default but at the end I will increase this up res factor to 3 when I increase the resolution divisions to 256 okay so that's that and finally in advanced I want to change this to zip okay I think that's all of our setup to be honest with you so let me go to camera okay that's good gonna just replace this and hit play so as you can see it is pushing downwards and that way and is going but it's not there's not enough um, force for it to push that way okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wind force there you go so I'm gonna say rotate in the X direction 90 okay and I will move this to eight not that one sorry X in the eight yeah so it's eight meters away okay and I also want to change this strength to 10 and noise amount to 10 so that it has a, a high noise factor and I will increase the max distance to 18 so it affects all the way up to here so the smoke gets pushed all the way up to here and then after that it starts to curl backwards okay and I'll switch the power to 1 and what this does is uh, how quickly the strength falls off okay so that's why you get this curl um, curly effect okay so that's that let's now try it again there you go you can see now that's being pushed towards the negative y direction a little more than previously experienced okay I think that looks pretty good now and this bottom board collision is very important okay all right cool so we've got uh, 37 frames here let me go straight into rendering okay um, so this is the shading part and I have enabled cycles um, the rest of them are at the moment default so I'm gonna just enable this and that's how it looks so if I now go to smoke domain and I will go to this guy and at the bottom here render you got a velocity scale I want to change this to 0 
because one is way too much okay now you won't see that here on the viewport but when you render the actual frame um, you will see that okay but one will be too much way too much all right so I'm just gonna bring that down to point one and let's just go into here uh, this one and just render region okay so that I don't waste GPU resource okay good um, so I want to just jump back into this render here all right and it's going to light paths and light paths I want to change this volume light path to okay you know what before I do that as a matter of fact I think I need to just do a little render um, so let's go ahead and get that done at 50% okay there you go it started now okay so that's our first render down now okay um, but there are a lot of things wrong here all right so let's go and fix them one by one I'll change it to slot two let's move on first thing is this first thing is the actual shader itself has not been set up yet so let me put in an attribute and bring in density Connect the factor to density. Okay, so then a lot of it disappears. And then put in a math node. And then let me copy this guy and put it again and change it to multiply. This is add, this is multiply. So why do I have it separate? Uh, why, when there is a, another option called multiply add, it's, it's, it doesn't work the same way, okay? I want to change this to 1.5 so you'll have a minimum of 1.5 value density everywhere and then I want to change multiply that by 2 so you get a little bit of denser smoke okay that's the first thing next thing is the color I want to just bump up the color to 1 okay all of these colors to 1 so we have that all right that's I'll just remove the temperature here because we're not using that um, that's basically the shading done for a smoke okay um, <clears throat> the next thing is uh, go back to render and down here in the volume uh, light paths I want to change this to one I want to have a minimum of one bounce at least because in real life light will bounce through the smoke uh, provided depending on how thick it is but regardless it will happen um, so that's that the next one is the volume um, to reduce render times I want to change this step rate render to 4 and this one as well 4 meaning um, it'll be quarter of the time the original render okay um, so that's that okay good so let me just do that and go ahead and do another render here now So the first one took 21 seconds. This won't be quarter of the time, by the way. <laughs> this uh, this change in step rate render here um, is to affect the final render. Okay, the first render we did was uh, just a Mickey Mouse render. All right. Okay, so we got 25, which is pretty much the same, but it will make a huge difference at the end. All right, because remember we are still at 128 resolution. I'll change it to 256 and increase the noise scale to 3 all right so um, that's all that and then finally motion blur I'll add that and, and film nothing there performance nothing oh yes there is okay see so this style size previously I thought this will be very handy but it isn't so I'm just gonna put this down to uh, 256 actually 256 uh, worked uh, perfectly for me okay so that's that and in color management make sure this view transform is set to filmic okay okay that's about it finally the actual render itself I want to change the max samples to 512 because I don't need 4096 because this is 512 I'm just gonna push this down to 256 and um, I'm enabling denoise by the way and I'll enable denoise in the viewport as well but let's go ahead and do another render 
This is slot three right now. Okay, that took 16 seconds, perfect. Now, if I look at the slot two, versus one, versus three. One versus three. As you can see, there's a significant difference. And that is the increasing, um, that is because of the uh, light path. Okay, uh, number of bounces. Okay, this one. That's what that is. All right, that's pretty good. I think we are ready to uh, go for the uh, high res here. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to 56 and I'll bump the noise up to 3. Save this and reset this. Yep, that's all good. Let me just run a few frames and I'll come back to you. Okay, so this is the um, 30th frame. Let's have a look at it. Okay, that looks uh, beautiful at the moment. Okay, that's perfect. So let me just go ahead and do a, a render. Um, just let me have a look. Okay, for it. All right, good. And I'm going to render this now. Uh, remember, because the type is set to replay, um, if you render animation, it won't work. For you to render animation, you need to change this type to all and bake the entire sequence and then render, okay? Okay, so uh, that looks uh, pretty darn good, I think. Um, but I just have a feeling that I may not have enabled motion blur or it's way too small. Um, I also have another... Okay, so... There, it's... Uh, the smoke is actually clipping on this side here, okay? So, <clears throat> let's just first of all check the actual... Motion blur is enabled here, as you can see, uh, but it's not working very well. That could be because, let me just go ahead and change this velocity scale to 0.5 and you'll see the difference, okay? Okay, good. Let me go ahead and render that image. It's taking quite a long time here because it's, I think it's loading the geometry. There it is, initializing and then synchronizing. This is what took a lot of time for me. Not the actual render, because the render itself was pretty decent, you know? Okay, so you can already clearly tell there's a, a significant difference, as you can see. Yeah, see, this is why I didn't want that. I want point 0.1. Point 0.1 is there. You can see. Uh, point 0.1 is pretty good. You know, I'm just going to leave it at point 0.1, all right? Okay, good. So, um, there's velocity scale of point 0.1. And finally, I would also like to change this to 16-bit and a compression of 50%. There's only one last thing I gotta check, which is the um, this box here, okay, the domain. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this guy to this side a little bit. So this will be X direction, just a little bit, all right? Okay, good. So I think we are pretty good now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, maybe uh, cache the uh, cache about 120 frames or so, and I'll come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the rendering is done now. Let's check it out. I think that looks pretty good. 
I uh, took it into After Effects, just added a little bit of a lot. Um, lookup table, and that's about it, really. Nothing else. Okay. All right, that is good. Okay, so um, I rendered 167 frames at 720p. And total sim time was an hour and three minutes. Total render time uh, was eight hours and 53 minutes. And 167th frame took five minutes. Now, um, I have a reason for that one. I'll show you now. But um, this render time is primarily because of loading and synchronizing the um, the data or you know smoke but the render itself didn't take that long and I'll show you that now okay so if I now view render now that is 167th frame you can see it took four hours and 52 minutes okay but what I also did was I imported the um, saved smoke or VDB and um, <clears throat> here again separately okay and that is in slot 2 you can see that it only took 2 hours and 5 minutes now the rest of the time that this has taken is to do with the loading of the geometry which is annoying um, but unfortunately there is no other way out at the moment and the reason behind that is Blender doesn't like to import its own VDB. I'll show you now. So I'll just enable these. Okay. So there's our fluid noise and there's the smoke object. Okay. If I now play this, you can see there's something weird going on. And that's because fluid noise is here. There is some sort of positional and uh, scale data problem here you know um, as you can see and this is to do with the adaptive domain setup but if you don't set up adaptive domain during your original sim it will take forever okay so hopefully um, blender foundation will fix this issue soon uh, because this is not useful as you can see from the render times um, you could cut it more than a half you know yes it's a little bit darker but you can work on that but the time is significantly different two hour two minutes and five seconds versus four minutes and 52 seconds that's significant difference okay so hopefully um, you learned something from it and I hope you liked it uh, if you did please give me a thumbs up like share comment um, as well as check out my Gumroad page. If you want to support me, please uh, purchase the project file. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, until next time, have a great time. Bye-bye.